So I'm going to explain real quick our process for doing bender board. Um, this is an edging that we use a lot of times for flower beds. Um, in this case, we're trying to separate the soil in the flower bed from an uh, area that's going to have bull rock for drainage. And so I have it marked out already where the bender board's going with the pink paint. Um, and you can see over here that I've got this marked out as well. There's going to be a flower bed right there. Um, but everything else in this area will be bull rock. So the tools that we need for bender board are a sawzall for cutting it, a, a drill and screws, because that's how you attach the stakes, and a mallet for putting the stakes in the ground. And this stuff, obviously, by the name, it bends, so um, it, it's good for, you know, having nice smooth curves and stuff like that. You also can, you know, if we're doing a squared off area, we cut it and can and butt it up against each other and just put a stake right in the corner to attach it. Uh, in this case, it's, it's pretty much just all curves. So for the most part, you want to try to use a full piece um, for the curves as much as you can. Any Anywhere that... If it's in a curve and you try to attach two pieces together, it makes it to where they don't look at, it's not as smooth of a curve. Um, so whenever we can, but sometimes we have to and, and you can just put like two stakes next to each other and just kind of strengthen it and that'll help uh, solve that problem sometimes. But what I usually do is I pick one side where the bender board's starting and <coughs> I'll go ahead and drive one stake in the ground. Um, Another thing is you want to be aware of all the utilities and irrigation lines because it happens quite often actually that we'll hit an irrigation line with the stakes and puncture it and then it's difficult to fix because then you got to come back and take the bender board back up and you usually don't know it until you're done with the job and you run through the sprinkler. So uh, in this case, you know, the irrigation was existing so we're just going to uh, hope we don't hit anything. Um, but the other thing is uh, the stakes, you always want to put the stakes on the side where they're going to be seen the least um, or if they're going to get covered up. In this case, on this side where the soil is, we're going to be building the soil up pretty much to the top. So we're going to put the stakes on that side of the bender board. So I'll go ahead and put one pretty close to the corner over here. Of course, this place has roots everywhere. And we just put it in the ground until it's pretty much flush with the top of the bender board. About right there. A little below is okay. And then I've got kind of a curve coming back this way and then it curves the other way so what I'll do is actually go ahead and screw in that stake to hold it and we do two uh, two screws per stake this one on top and one on bottom And then we usually try to space the stakes out. Uh, we do four, no, sorry, five stakes per per piece, um, and they're twenty feet long. So that's every five feet we put a stake. Um, so it's four to five stakes per per piece of bender board. But whenever there's a lot of curves, it a lot of times takes more. Um, so in this case, you know, as long as it's holding its shape, then I don't need to put a stake. So if I come over here and line it up, actually I'll, this side needs to be picked up so it, so 
it seems like to be able to keep that shape I probably need to put one right here so I line it up and then before I put my screws make sure I got the shape I want and then put, I can screw it in Something that I wanted to add is that it's important to make sure that the area in the ground is graded and leveled before the bender board is installed, which makes for a easier installation process. So the next part, we're actually going to stop the bender board right about here, maybe about over here. That way we can, we're not blocking the water because the water kind of drains this direction. And so I'll make sure it's got the right shape it needs, decide where I want to cut it, and just use the sawzall to cut it. So that's about it. Um, I believe these screws are <coughs> inch and a quarter. They actually just use drywall screws. They tend to work the best because they have bigger uh, like threads on them. Um, but this stuff is uh, one inch thick or three quarter. I think it's three quarters of an inch thick. So inch and a quarter is about right. So it doesn't poke all the way through the other side, but it also gets enough it gets enough of it to hold it tight okay. so another thing I want to explain is whenever we're doing a, a section that's longer than one piece or if we're needing to use a couple small pieces to to piece it together these things are made with a notch like about half of it is cut out and so you to uh, put them together we put them in not to face in the opposite direction that way it just slides right together like that and then you we usually put about uh, two screws that connect the two and and also a, a stake so you put a stake right there and then screw through both pieces of bender board and into the stake and if it's on a curve um, sometimes you have to put maybe another stake off to the side to help strengthen it and, and uh, attach it there as well.